With all the turmoil and uncertainty in Washington over health care, it's not often that we've got actually a positive story about the subject. But the Children's Health Fund is just that. Dom, he visited Harlem as well as the Bronx to see the organization in action. Dom? Richard, for three decades, this organization has been helping children, and now there's a new man in charge. It's the 30th anniversary of the Children's Health Fund providing care to kids. Stacy Saunders has been coming to their South Bronx Health Center on Prospect Avenue with her son Thomas for the last 10 years. This is like super quality health care in the South Bronx. And when you think about the South Bronx and you think about the population of people that live here, we, because I'm a product of this community as well, we don't have a whole lot of resources. We caught up with their mobile unit in Harlem on 126th Street across from the state office building. Dr. Justin Copa is a pediatrician. So let me show you the mobile unit. Uh, a patient would come on and we have a receptionist here uh, check in and then uh, there's a little waiting area if I have another patient that I'm seeing at that time. Uh, this is the nurse's station. Uh, we have a full stock of vaccines, uh, medications that need to be refrigerated, uh, all kinds of supplies to do lab work. Um, we have a basic lab here. Uh, we can do uh, screening hemoglobins and uh, finger stick leads right on the, the mobile unit. Um, so basic lab work, we do rapid strep tests. Uh, and then we have two exam units on this mobile unit, uh, a smaller a smaller room. Uh, sometimes we have a psychologist on board who uses this room as well. Uh, and then this is one of our main exam rooms. Uh, all of these are designed to be full-scale exam rooms. So we can do almost anything that we can do in the office uh, right here on the van. Dennis Walto is the CEO of the Children's Health Fund. Mr. Walto, why was this organization started? Well, back in 1986 and 1987, the city of New York was facing a homelessness crisis. There were thousands of children and families who were holed up in welfare hotels and shelters who were not receiving access to health services. Uh, the singer Paul Simon, singer-songwriter Paul Simon, and Dr. Erwin Redliner visited one of these shelters. We're talking about the legendary Paul Simon. Yeah, singer-songwriter Paul Simon, uh, and they wanted to do something about it. The conditions inside these welfare hotels were horrific, and they said, we can deliver health services right here. Let's get together. Let's do it. Mr. Walto, give me an example, concrete example, of how you know this program is making a big difference in the community. Well, there are two ways, really, to know that we're working. One are just the numbers, right? This mobile unit, the New York program, is seeing more than 11,000 children per year, right? That's a, a huge number of kids that come through our door. But that isn't really your measure of success. Your measure of success, her name is Isabel. And Isabel is a, a little girl who was doing really well in school and then started to, to falter. And her mom was concerned, right? And at one point, during one of her regular checkups, she came into the mobile unit. And we detected, we found out that she actually had trouble hearing. And that the reason for her non-performance in school was really related to the fact that she couldn't hear the teacher. And that was discovered during one of the uh, examinations that she had on the mobile unit. Now, she had missed an exam a year earlier because her mom didn't have health insurance. Well, that doesn't matter to us. We see children here regardless of their ability to pay, whether they have insurance or not. So we saw that child, we saw her mom, and now she's thriving. She's in school and she's doing great. Dr. Copa, what is the difference from mobile unit medicine as compared to traditional medicine that you practice? I think it's similar in a lot of ways. I mean, we are practicing the same kind of medicine. I think what happens on mobile units is a little bit different because um, we tend to find people at more vulnerable times in their lives. A lot of our patients are homeless. A lot of our patients are coming to a mobile unit because they haven't established care in a more continual environment, a more regular environment. And so we tend to see things that are a little bit more acute or not well taken care of. We sometimes have to be a little bit more aggressive with therapies because we can't reliably follow up with people um, if we don't know if they're gonna come back. A lot of talk these days about the potential budget cuts coming out of Washington. All over the place, changes every day. But what would be the impact of Medicaid cuts to this program? It, it has to terribly scare you. 
It, it's keeping us up at night, yes, absolutely. Anytime you look at a reduction in Medicaid services, I mean, across the country, 37 million kids are receiving services through Medicaid. Here in New York State, more than 2.2 million. And those are 2.2 million Isabels. Or there, another child that we saw named Jose. And Jose was missing school all the time, right? He was chronically absent. And when we finally got to see him, we knew why, because he had asthma. He had untreated and uncontrolled asthma. It was causing him to stay up at night. He couldn't get up in the morning to go to school. So by the time that we were able to see him, we got him back on his meds, right? Got his asthma under control. Now he's back in school and he's performing well. You know, we've got to be able to, to catch that before it slips. So preventative care is critical. Don, thank you very much. All right, everybody, when we come back, we'll take a quick check of our headlines. Please stay with us.